Hi, here welcoming you to another episode of Real English Conversations. In today's conversation, my friend Yvette returns to help me finish our earlier conversation about perfectionism and procrastination. This time, we focus on the strategies that we found helpful in our own battles with this debilitating problem. Okay, here we go. Actually, uh, there was one thing that I think in our last conversation about uh, perfectionism and procrastination that we didn't really cover. Okay. And that's what you do to get out of the procrastination habit once you've identified that you have a problem with it. Like if you have any any methods that you use to help you get over the fear of starting or, or working on whatever it is you're supposed to be working on like <laughs> you're an, asking me yeah yeah we, we didn't talk about about that how you actually get out of it <laughs> yeah if wow. there's anything you um, do <laughs> if you find out let me know um, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of tricky um wow that's something to think about um well, usually I start with a plan, and you break it down in smaller bits. Mm -hmm. So wh the the way that I can do it sometimes is to just say, there is, um, I need to do a task, and let me just first open the file folder. Mm. <laughs> That's my first step. Once I've got that opened up, and I've got the file maybe even opened in my browser, whatever I need it to be in, um, then I can start working on it. Okay. But um, it really is just kicking my butt, <laughs> giving myself a good kick and go, come on, you can do it, do it today. Yeah. But I, but I tend to just find 15 other things to do first, which is clear my desk. Oh, yeah, I need lunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I need to do the, oh, let me just do the groceries right now instead of later so I don't, don't get interrupted by that. Yeah. Um, so I try to get rid of things, but um, I don't know. I, I try to plan it better. But that usually doesn't work uh -huh. for me, anyway. Uh huh. Well, it sounds to me w when you mentioned that, for example, if it's a writing project, that you start by just opening the file. To yeah. me, that sounds like you're breaking it down to something easily achievable um, to force yourself to at least make the move to get started. I mean, you can't right. start unless you've actually opened the file like breaking it down to something you know you can do that really doesn't require any performance. I mean, it's not difficult right. to just open the file and look at it, but then at least you've made that first step. Yeah, it's. I, I do find, though, that that is the hardest step, that very first one. Once I've got that one, it pretty much moves on from there. I, I can, once I've got the file and I know what I'm looking at, and, and maybe part of that is that it's a bit chaotic, especially as a writer. Um, I may have 15 drafts of a similar text, and I'm not even sure what the first one or the last one was that I used and which one I was in, and I try to make notes of this in a notebook that I keep specifically for that purpose. Um, but uh, to know what part, uh, what I should be working on, um, just that identifying that helps and then I can open that file in my word processor and start working um, and then it's okay mm. and then it's just a matter of not getting interrupted by anything or anybody yeah that's really hard because once that interruption comes then it's very hard to go back to it yeah it takes you a while to get back into the flow yeah once you've been interrupted but it's also kind of overcoming a sort of fear of not being able to do it Mm. Um, you know, when you when you want to start a task and you think, oh, I don't know, it's a big task, I'm not sure I can do it. Mm. Um, you know, to just get started and, and throw out the idea that it needs to be perfect and that, it, you know, any effort right now would be good. But by that time, though, I've already procrastinated to a point of, of it almost not being possible anymore <laughs> or at least uh, mm. being way too late. Mm. Um, mm. You know what I mean? It's like you, you've already kind of passed five deadlines at this point. Yeah. I guess we're, we're coming around again to that idea that just getting started is often the hardest part. Yeah. And, and by that, I don't mean like actually started at the beginning of a project, but maybe even when you're working on it, like getting started with your work period for the day or whatever. Yeah. That's yeah. really hard. And I found, for me, there was actually a site on the internet that had what they called a procrastination hack. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that I've actually used it from time to time and it I find that 
that it, it's been quite helpful in just getting me when it, especially for jobs that are just a matter of like sitting your butt in the chair for a certain amount of time and just focusing on it you know to get it done um, and what they call it is the procrastination 10 plus 2 times 5 hack okay <laughs> and basically what it is is you need to use a little timer and you set your timer for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and the idea is that you're going to sit down and you're going to single-mindedly focus on your task and work on it for 10 minutes and after that you get to take a two-minute break and just screw around and do whatever you want for two minutes and then after that you've got another 10-minute work period and then followed by a two-minute break and if you do that five times you've basically spent an hour of which 50 minutes you've been productively working on your task and it sounds like really kind of cheesy and stupid but when you're like so desperate and like can't find any way to get started and you know that well if I just do that first 10 minutes then I can spend two minutes dorking around and doing whatever I want it just kind of makes it more concrete that you have the specific see. work period and it's, it's not too long I mean 10 minutes is only 10 minutes and I found I don't actually use it anymore but I have used it in the past and I found that it was it was actually kind of a, a way to make the task seem less daunting you know you're you're putting a limit on it and you're giving your, yourself a chance to to screw around and um, yeah I, I, I found it really useful I would find 15 ways around that. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I would probably spend most of the time figuring out how I can make that work in a different way. Uh -huh. now, what, I, what I do do is, um, especially when I'm writing, and I know, I mean, it's to tell myself I need to write for four hours today. Mm -hmm. And then I have a stopwatch. And every time I stop writing, I just hit the stopwatch. It's like, okay, well, that's it. You know, you're not working right now. And um at the end of the day, I just have to have four hours worth of work, and I don't okay. care how I get there, but I just do it that way. And uh, the advantage of it is is that uh, you find, and I discovered that the amazing amount of work you can do in four hours, you know, what yeah, you're not thinking yeah. about. It's, it's so much work, and mm. uh, yet, you know, you don't feel like you've worked all that much because it's only four hours in a day, big mm. deal. But that helps. Yeah, to me, that sounds like a similar idea except you've you're a lot more flexible in the time yeah. that you've set the limit of four hours and yeah because I would hate to get interrupted any in, by anything you know if if I got 10 minutes of writing done I'm in it and now I don't want to stop writing I just want to keep going yeah well and, that's uh, that's kind of the idea is that you know once you then get in the flow you wouldn't need to do it oh, okay, it's really the, more yeah. for when you've just got this huge resistance to just even getting yeah. started and even like you're completely blocked and and just can't get get going at all because you've built it up to the, be this huge thing. Yeah. But then kind of telling yourself, well, I only need to do 10 minutes. To to me, that that was like a huge. It's it's a very big mental exercise, isn't it? It's not mm -hmm. about the physical or the time. You don't have the time. You do have the time. It's just that there's a mental block. Yeah. And uh, you're not you're not sure what to do next. Yeah. Yes. Well, you you can think of a lot of other things to do, and it's just because for some reason you just don't feel comfortable, or you feel that the time needs to be right, or the atmosphere that it's too warm or it's too cold, or yeah, you know, fifteen other things running through your mind. What else can I do? And um, you know, instead of the thing you should do. Yeah, a lot of those things you mentioned, like finding all these other things that you you want to do instead of the thing you should be doing, I think those mm -hmm. are all kind of avoidance strategies yeah. to protect you from, you know, the thing that you're afraid of in, in to begin with is that, oh, it won't be good enough or it's going to be hard or people aren't going to like it. You know, th those are all the things going yeah. in the back of your mind that, What's have the you, point of this? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's I mean, all that, just that's avoidance. That's what it is. Yeah, if if uh, when when I'm as a writer, I uh, I often come across things that uh, that I'm not sure in the end anybody would even care about or like, and I have to do it all because I like it. Yeah. And uh, and then it's harder. But on on the other hand, I do have to say that once I make it enjoyable for myself, I give myself. Um, say a treat at the end of it like I give myself some reward 
Oh. Then I then I can I can actually get it going. You cannot, you know. There's one thing I really want to do, a movie I really want to see, or a TV show I don't want to miss. Uh -huh. Then I'm telling myself you you can't watch it until you finish the task. Okay. At hand. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Yeah. So not punishment, but reward. Yeah. This concludes our conversation on procrastination and perfectionism, at least for the time being. Now, if I can only find the perfect topic for the perfect podcast, we'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.